Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all excellent. Today, we're going to take a look at the updated flanger block in the Axe FX3. And I know there's a bunch of people who watch these videos who don't own a fractal product. So I do want to kind of make this about flanges in general. So whether you're using a pedal board, a rack, or another digital modeler, hopefully there is some interesting information in here regarding flanges. Okay. The first thing I want to talk about is where you put your flanger. Do you put it before the amp or do you put it like in the effects loop or in the case of the axe effects after the amp or after the amp and cab. So let's hear a couple of different situations. I have a clean sound dialed up here. This is with the flanger off. And we're using this FAS flanger type. What I can do is I've got a flanger in front and a flanger behind with the same settings. Hope they're the same settings anyway. Let's hear it in front of the amp, then I'll switch over using my FC6 so that I'm using the flanger after the amp. Alrighty, we got there in the end. You can hear that running the flanger after the amp and cab, if you were using uh, like a traditional guitar amp setup, probably running it in the effects loop is way more pronounced and way more dramatic than using the flanger in front of the amp. To me, running the uh, flanger, I should say, it's kind of like more chorus than chorus when you run it in front of the amp. And when you run it after the amp, you get that big jet plane swoosh. So. With that, there are four parameters that nearly every real world flanger pedal, I apologize about my squeaky chair as well, has on it if you're familiar with, you know, whether it's a boss pedal or an electro harmonics pedal or a rack flanger or a plug-in. And they are represented here on the Axe FX3. We've got rate, depth, feedback. Feedback is sometimes called regeneration or regen. And we've got manual. So the depth is controlling the depth of the LFO. The rate is controlling the speed and the feedback is controlling the amount of signal that's getting fed back in. And that's gonna kind of increase that. Uh, I like to call it like a kind of throb effect in there. Uh, some people might think it makes it sound metallic or something like that. And then the manual control as well, which manually adjusts between these minimum and maximum times in here. So on the Axe FX3, if you set the depth to zero, the flanging is controlled totally by the manual control. So you could set up a manual flanger by assigning a like an expression pedal to this. Uh, and with depth at 100%, it's 100% controlled by the LFO in there. So first choice is, okay, you're gonna put it before the amp or after the amp. And the second choice is to play around with these parameters. There's also a bunch of advanced parameters, but I wouldn't worry too much about those. I would just select different effect types until you hear something you like. Let's go to that clean sound. Let's try this electric mystery. I love the way this one sounds. <laughs> Bye. 
as you can see there as well, there's also an auto depth control. A lot of the modes have that off, so it will get super wobbly and unstable sounding. Uh, but yeah, for clean sounds, to be honest, I prefer the flanger in front of the amp there to get that kind of lovely, like late 70s, Andy Summers, Alex Lifeson kind of thing going on. Whereas for dirty sounds, if we go to scene two over here, uh, I'd like something like say the, if I'm going in front of the amp, the ADA flanger with the rate turned down, a little bit of feedback. Uh, I generally like the manual somewhere between like 10 and two o'clock on nearly every mode as well. And you get this. <laughs> And it's pretty fun to turn the feedback up like that and get that kind of weird, crazy, I don't know, that you really hear that metallic effect there. If you say go and set the, uh, ooh, what are we doing? Let's set FC1 pedal number one. This is my expression pedal to the feedback control. And let's do this. Let's set the minimum to zero and the maximum to wherever the maximum is. You can add that kind of weird ray gun thing in there by pushing down on your expression pedal. <laughs> Very, very fun indeed. I always remember seeing a Paul Gilbert video from years ago where he had an ADA flanger and one of those third hand expression knob turner things and he was doing a similar thing. So with the axe effects, it is very, very straightforward. You could assign any modifier to that as well, like a control switch or an envelope or something like that. You could create an envelope flanger that way as well. Okay, so that's in front and behind. One really cool thing that the Axe FX3 does is, actually I'll just go to the scene where I've got this set up. Uh, thanks to Matt from Fractal for helping me big time with this one. Uh, this is a 2-0 flanger. Uh, when we use this kind of through zero flanging effect, which comes from the era of tape flanging where you would have two tape heads, put your finger on one so it slowed down and then sped up and you get that iconic kind of tape flange. There are several ways to do that in the Axe FX3. There's the through zero flanger and the manual through zero flanger. You'll notice that the depth needs to be at zero to do this and we're controlling the manual control with an expression pedal. But this is really cool. As I press down, it's going to zero, but because of the updated uh, basically algorithms in here. You can set the dry delay to zero. Uh, you can also play around with this bass focus, but that's for another time. Uh, basically, you get this effect. You heard it at the start of the video. which is an amazing effect. I think the Eventide Instant Flanger was one of the first uh, non-physical like physical tape units uh, that let you do flanging. And this kind of cops that sound with the through zero effect very, very nicely indeed. Okay, so we've talked about flanger in front of the app. We've talked about flanger behind the app. We've had a look at a few effect types, uh, not all of them. I would highly encourage you if you're an Axe FX3 user to scroll through the effect types, play around with these four knobs here and kind of get a feel for what each of them do before you go diving into the advanced parameters. Uh, what, what was I saying? Yeah, before, after, and we've heard this through zero effect, let's have a listen to this preset because this is, again, thanks to Matt for the inspiration with this one, uh, a choral flange kind of sound. We've got one flange is set up, you can see with the feedback at zero. And actually both of them have the feedback at zero there. This is kind of copying, uh, you know, there's a pretty well-known pedal, the full tone choral flange. Using these two blocks together really just sounds beautiful. It's like a chorus, it's like a flange, it's like a best of both worlds modulation effect. <laughs> Uh, 
Again, using those modes which kind of sound like a chorus, kind of sound like a flanger. We're using them after the cab to get a more pronounced effect. That is beautiful. Let's have a listen to this though, because the multi-tap delay has to work its way in somehow when we're talking about chorus and flanging and delay in the Axe FX3. So this isn't a flanger block, but this quad tap delay mode lets you set short delay times, which is nice, as you can see there. We can have feedback on each of those, and we can assign chorus to each of those, as you can see there. So this multi-tap delay can be a quad choral flange, and it sounds incredible. <laughs> So it's a pretty awesome alternative to the straight up flanger block. And it doesn't sound exactly like the flanger block. It has its own character. And you can obviously go in and kind of combine these approaches with, you know, multiple flanger blocks and the multi delay and placing them before and after the cab. You know, this is kind of the magic of the Axe FX3. There's so much processing power and so many routing possibilities that if you can dream it, you can probably do it. So let's go back to this flanges preset that I had here, because there's one last thing that I want to cover. You know, we looked at flanger before and after the cab, we looked at kind of a through zero or a two zero flanger, and we looked at choral flange and the multi-delay. One thing that's really, really cool, for example, if you want to do the Van Halen Unchained thing. So I don't know what the specific settings are, but there's an MXR flanger model. So let's just turn the feedback up a bit and the manual up a bit. Uh, this is what it sounds like uh, with the dirty sound in front of the amp. <laughs> Maybe I want that to sweep a bit slower, so I'll turn the rate down. Again, I'm not referencing the recording. Obviously, the amp tone isn't going to sound anything like Eddie's. But what you can do is, in Unchained, is he only turns the flanger on when he's chugging the low string. So what we can do is let's assign a control switch to the bypass mode. I'll go control switch 4. And if you have a look at my FC controller, on layout, what is that, layout eight, which is my, uh, where is it? Control switches layout. Control switch four, I've set as a momentary switch. So it's only gonna engage when I press it and hold it down. That way, rather than like turn the effect on and off really quickly, it can give me that unchained swoosh because I've assigned it to the bypass state. So let's do that. Uh, and I want this to work the other way around. So let's go minimum is bypass and maximum is engage. So. Let's try it. That takes way more coordination than I have at the moment. Uh, and just using that little momentary switch trick is really, really cool. I dig that quite a lot. Again, uh, not trying to emulate that sound exactly. If you could probably look up the settings for his flanger and copy them with these four controls here by ear and you would probably get really, really close. So that's quite cool. I like that with a control switch. What else can I talk about in this? I don't know. If you're an Axe FX user, try some of these modes. You know, you may have never heard of this, uh, you know, for example, the Boss BF2. I've never played a BF2, believe it or not, but if I engage it, sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, I think rumor has it is that's a, the flanger on Bark at the Moon, but I'm not sure if that's a flanger or a phaser or a chorus. They're all so similar. So nevertheless, I hope you guys learnt something. I certainly learnt something while I was doing this. You know, don't try to step on a control switch when you're not sitting on your chair properly. But placement in your signal chain is super important with a flanger and basically how you dial it in and how you balance out rate and depth feedback and manual. And in the Axe FX3, you know, we've got all these other awesome controls in here, which you can explore, especially the through zero function. Super, super fun. Or if you don't want to do that, just play around with the effect types and find something you like, put it somewhere in your signal chain and 
play some guitar and have some fun because that is what this is all about. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you didn't think you were gonna escape that easily. There's one point that before I shot the video, I was like, Leon, you need to include this in the video. And I forgot about it. This is a faux TC1210 style effect that you can dial in. The TC1210 was like a spatial flanger, they called it. But uh, my understanding of it anyway, it's quite similar to the 2290 dynamic delay where you can reverse the phase on one side of the stereo signal so you can make it sound really wide. It's a really cool effect. It's a very 80s sounding effect. With the phase reverse button in the XFX3 right here, we can emulate all of that. So what I'm gonna do is have it off. This is what it sounds like. It sounds quite lovely. <laughs> It's a really, really cool spatial effect. If you weren't listening on monitors or on headphones, if you were listening in mono, like through your phone, you might not have heard the effect, but that phase reverse is one of the coolest things. Uh, again, I'm not claiming this sounds exactly like the TC1210. It's more an inspired by setting. I love this FAS flanger and just kicking in one of the phase reverses on either the left or the right channel gives you that big wide 80s style thing. Uh, 1210 is a bucket list piece of gear for me to at least try out one day. So if I do get the chance to try one out, you know I'm gonna try and match it with the Axe FX3. Anyway, phase reverse, it's good, bye.